today we are going to see how to set up a private hosted zone using Amazon Route 53 service. I've already into, uh, logged into my dashboard. Let me just Google for, uh, search for my uh, Route 53 service here. It should take me to the Route 53 dashboard. Now this is my dashboard as you can see here uh, there are different different things for example at the bottom you have uh, your DNS management traffic management availability monitoring and registration also all these three or four options that we spoke about so traffic management is uh, traffic shipping is uh, one of the very costliest of services that Amazon offers uh, depending upon the different uh, policies you can visually uh, uh, shape your traffic using this service and availability monitoring is the health checking service that we spoke about the health checking your uh, application and performance checking your applications and the registration of the service i will just quickly click on this and show you there's not much here because you just go and uh, try to, when you try to register your domain name it's very much a simple here uh, if you click on register your domain it asks you what domain name that you want to search if it is a dot com or anything say for example i am happy i'm funny uh, Alexi demo. Uh, let me do training dot demo. No, not that one. Let me just click on check. It will automatically check whether that domain name is available for me or not, and it will go give me the price as well. So you can see here it gives me a price of uh, close to twelve dollars uh, for one year, and the other options that I might even think of doing it. So I can click on cart and then go and buy it that domain name will show in my account so that is how you register a domain name but you can do this very cheap in uh, route, uh, in godaddy itself instead of doing it in route 53 so that is what is registering domain name is for let's go back to my dashboard we are talking are going to talk about the private dns that is going to be in uh, dns management here uh, that is at the bottom left hand side or the first panel that you will see dns management so click on get started now and the first thing you do in route 53 is always and always remember that the first thing is create a hosted zone and under that hosted zone only will create records multiple records c name alias uh, apex and all those records so first thing is to create a hosted zone so that is what we're going to create and when you're creating a hosted zone we can create public or private so in this demo we are going to choose a private hosted zone so let us click on create hosted zone again so here you see here it's asking me uh, what is my domain name i'm just going to say galaxy and then private hosted zone demo and here is the option for choosing whether it is public or private and i'm going to choose it is going only for my vpc and it is going to ask me which vpc it is or which region it is so if I have the uh, VPC that I've already created, I'll choose it. If not, we'll go ahead and create one. I'm talking about the Mumbai region here. So here I'm in Asia Pacific uh, Mumbai and here I have two VPCs. I'm going to choose this one which says Galaxy ELP Demo VPC where it was a multi availability zone VPC. I'm just going to choose this one. So and that's it. We are going to create a hosted zone which is private now. And I, I need to make it like a Galaxy domain name as a Galaxy, let us say Galaxy.com. Create. So uh, that, uh, that is it. Uh, automatically it creates the name servers. So these are the name servers I want to use internally if I want to uh, request for any a server within galaxy.com this is all internal this is not the outside world by the way so if i have any resources and looking for any resource inside galaxy.com these are the name servers that i need to reach or in, in other words if i do ns lookup these are the name servers that will come for me so we don't have any resource as of now in our uh, vpc so let us go ahead and create a couple of uh, ec2 servers and then we will come back and add those EC2 servers as the record sets. So here we just go ahead and create a record set for those EC2 servers once it is ready. Let me just go over quickly, go to EC2, click on launch instance. And once again, I'm going to uh, use uh, Amazon 
uh, Linux here. And I'm going to click on next configure details and be careful about choosing the VPC. I chose the Galaxy ELB demo VPC. And I'm going to choose the public subnet. This is the private, where is the public? Here is the one year public and uh, enable. And I'm just going to use the role and uh, I'm going to copy the code or just going to uh, create a web server here. Now that I finished typing the user data code for installing a web server, let me just go ahead and add storage. Nothing to add here. I'm just going to name it as uh, SRB01. Let us use the same name. Okay, 1A, let us call it. Configure security group. Public. Click on next. Launch. Launch. Let us go ahead and launch one more in availability zone 1B. I'm going to click on launch more like this. Since we guys are familiar with the doing it plenty of times, I'm just going to do it quickly. I'm going to my EC2 dashboard and uh, my both my servers should be up and running. I'm just going to minimize it so that we will be able to see what is happening there. Yep, or both the servers are getting built and ready. I'm going to uh, So if this server is ready means we should be able to access it <clears throat> through our URL also. Or in the IP address, if server is up and running, we should be able to have, a, okay, that is working. So I'm just going to check the other one is also working. Okay, did we not assign a public IP address to this guy? Okay, we might not have a server running there because we did not assign public IP address, I think. It might not have internet, so you can see here uh, when we, I launched it, I did not launch with the public IP address. So the user data code might have copied, but uh, we might not have an HTTP server running now uh, because it didn't connect to the M server. But anyway, we should be able to ping with this IP address. That is also good because uh, we are going to take this IP address first. First, we'll configure it for this server internally. Take this private IP address and click on, I'm going to route 53. Now we are going to create the record sets. Click on create record set. Put in our, um, <clears throat> let us say this one is going to be called SRV01A. And I'm creating an A record. And whenever I'm putting an A record, you can see the example is here. It says put in an IP address. So if I choose an C name here, it will ask me to give an example, something like www.example.com. If I want an alias record, then I will choose an alias. Then the alias will be in CloudFront or ELB or an S3 endpoint, which is an Amazon resource itself. I will not put an IP address here. It will be an endpoint created by an Amazon. We are not doing any of those things. We are going to create an A record and it is not an alias also. We are just going to choose an IP address here. So this is the IP address that I'm going to give. That is the IP address of my uh, server one, which is in availability zone one A. Click on create. So we have created one record set for server 1A and we are going to create another record set from server 1B. So SRV01 in B. 
I'm just going to copy the IP address of the other server now, which is going to be 10.240.1.140. Copy it, go ahead and paste it. And remember the routing policies that we spoke about. Here is the routing policy. If you want to change any of those routing policies using the different options, you can go ahead and choose it here. If I choose weighted, it will ask me what is the weights I have given. Or if I choose a latency based, uh, choose a region from which the latency has to be set. What is the source? And if you want to associate a health check or not, and if I want to click on associate health check, you don't have anything pre-existing. Do you want to configure it? So you can go ahead and configure them also for basic, most of the simple configurations are yeah, simple is enough. I mean, most of the smallest environmental setup, simple routing policy is more than enough because it takes care of both the other problems of round robin and health checking. It does it automatically. So click on create. So we have created two record sets and automatically our DNS will be propagated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log into the one server 1A uh, with its public IP address because I am outside the VPC. So to connect to it, I should use the public IP address. And from there, you will try to ping this server using this domain name now. Uh, where shall I copy it? I hope you'll hear it copies. Okay. I'm just going to put it in a notepad so I don't have to come back here. And the public IP address of my server 1A is 13. Dot, okay, I'm going to copy this. And so let us go to my terminal and confirm that uh, all the details are in place. Let me edit it. This is the one. Okay, advanced settings. I'm just going to check whether the key is uh, the Mumbai key that I'm using. Open, click on open, double click on it. If everything is fine, we should get connected. Okay, now I don't need to be in root, but anyway, let me go there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to see SSH. I'm going to connect to the other server, SRV 02B, 02B.galaxy.com. Oh, could not resolve. Okay, did we get the host name right? Just let me confirm that. Okay, um, first two times when I was doing an NS lookup and SSH, I was using the wrong uh, host name or typing the wrong command. You can, can see here there is no server called SRV02B. It is actually SRV01B. And here I was typing it NS lookup a couple of times. So let me just try to uh, do an SSH here. SSH will connect with a prompt, but it won't work because we have not copied the keys. So if I do and do an S, it will not work. So let me just copy the key quickly and try to connect it. And from the second server, we'll try to ping the first server now. I just now copied the key to my uh, server and I have just changed the permission also. So we should be able to connect to it. I'm just going to put an up arrow so we can see the SSH. Okay, hyphen I, private key. And then we need to give it as an easy to user because the key is for easy to user. Okay. Now we should be able to get connected. See that it worked automatically. If you can see uh, the IP address is changed now. Uh, this is uh, the uh, so server one and this is the server two that we connected. So if I try to do an NS lookup uh, for uh, srva.galaxy.com and you can see here yeah, I get the IP address of these two servers. So again, if I copy the key from here and connect to the other server, it should work and it will definitely work because I'm able to resolve it and I'm able to get the IP address of that server and all of them are the same VPC. I should be able to connect it. So even if I do something like this, I will get the password from for this as well. So that is how you set up a private DNS within your Amazon AWS account. And this is not completely routable from the internet. For example, if I just copy paste this into my browser, it will not work because the galaxy.com is not registered in my name. You can go ahead and create any corporate domain name also or any domain name for testing purposes. Mainly you can try it out in real world scenarios because this traffic is not impacted by the external world traffic. So that is how you set up a private hosted zone in Amazon.